Hello everyone and welcome to the Mongal Grill. So it's been 30 days since I put this select grade red by in my dry aging cabinet and uh, I'm anxious to see the result. I've never tried uh, dry aging a select grade red by, but um, this is what I have right now. So let's take a closer look and see what this looks like. So as opposed to the other prime ribs that I um, hooked in the dry aging cabinet, this one was actually rested on the cabinet. Um, so let me uh, show you uh, the side. Like this side here was facing the rear side of the refrigerator and uh, it looks like um, there's a lot more bacterial activity going on on that side. And uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the front side of it. Uh, there's not much to say here, but you can see the fat particles that have uh, solidified um, and uh, came out of the, uh, let's say, meat. And this side here, um, is a dryer and uh, what I can tell is that it, there was probably more airflow on this side that uh, caused this uh, drying. Now on this other side here, in the back here, uh, there's a, uh, I mean it looks good to me, I, I don't know what to tell you, there, there's of course a little bit of crust forms and uh, I want to show you uh, the bottom part of it and uh, see how that looks. You can see that uh, there's um, the shelf marks, the wire marks there. But um, I don't know, maybe it might have been a good idea to move this a little bit once in a while because uh, some of uh, this line, uh, some of these lines, uh, they're blocking the airflow basically. So if you wanted to have equal airflow among the whole surface, it would have been better to um, just uh, move it around but nevertheless these are very tiny it should be totally fine so um, how about we uh, cut into these steaks and uh, see how the inside looks because that's the most important part right so um, let's get going with that all right let's get this sharp knife and I'm gonna cut right in the middle yeah well as I'm cutting I can definitely tell you that this is a uh, not as hard as the, um, the the crust is not as hard as the prime ones and uh, it looks like there's not much of uh, meat loss here let's uh, get a closer look right so this is uh, I think rusting <laughs> is going to be better uh, this definitely looks uh, like it's got a lot more yield than the uh, prime ones that I had but uh, I wonder how the flavor is, so let's get going. So from this angle, I can tell you that this is definitely a tender steak. Uh, with the um, prime ones, when I press on uh, the uh, uh, pellicle, the meat wouldn't actually move as much. So this one looks to be much better. So uh, let's see how the first slice will cut through. Yep, definitely good. The bottom side is definitely hotter. Um, can't really tell why. Uh, maybe it is because um, there's probably more airflow there. So let me show you the bottom part of it. It's, uh, it's pretty tough. Um, if you look, this side has dried more compared to the top side. Now the top side is not as dry and uh, I'll take that into consideration when I'm modifying it. I mean you can see how tender it is. I mean I, my finger would definitely pierce through there so I think this is a really really good steak. I'm gonna go ahead with uh, removing the uh, pellicles and we'll uh, prep this for barbecue for tonight. Okay we're back everyone. A little bit of a change in plans uh, by the way, the chickens that you saw earlier, unfortunately, uh, they they were victimized by a fox. So I lost five of my chickens. I have to secure my chicken, the rest of the chickens in the chicken coop. So um, that's why we're doing it in the dark right now. But uh, also, I wanted to tell you that I am going with a thick cut steak this time. Uh, in the meantime, I want to let you know, uh, everybody is free to choose their cooking temperature when it comes to steak. There has been a lot of hate talk going about uh, steaks. I want to make a separate video on that, but uh, I'll cook this uh, with a little pink uh, in the middle. So before I put it on the uh, grill, I want to get uh, some of that ribeye fat 
and just um, rub it over the grill and that's going to create a nice non-stick surface and immediately after that I'm going to put the steak right on the grill. I mean I am hearing that sizzling so that means we're doing good. Alright so two minutes have passed and I'm going to lift it and I'll show you the bottom. Now I'm going to turn it this way just to create that seal mark and we're going to continue cooking this. All right, so another two minutes have passed. I'm going to grab this and flip it on the other side. And look how it is sizzling right there. And my method is I prefer to put the salt uh, on the cooked side. And uh, you can go generously, but it's a personal preference. Whatever you want to put, you put on your steak. It is your steak in the end. So uh, two minutes like that, and then another two minutes on the other side, and uh, we will be nearing the end. All right, I think we are pretty much done. I'm going to flip it over. You see the seal marks over there as well. And I'm going to salt this side as well. Now, because this is a thick steak, I'm going to give this just about five minutes to rest. Now you see that it's uh, not very juicy, but once it rests, it's going to um, burst all that juice outside. So um, let's go back inside. So it's been five minutes, and I had to put a aluminum foil right on it. So uh, in that meantime, I want to show you up close how this looks like. Now we do have the juices flowing, you can see. This part has dried up, that's because it's on the exterior, you can actually hear um, the uh, scratching. But uh, I would like to go ahead and uh, cut the steak. And remember, this is um, a select grade steak. And for those who like medium, uh, let's say medium, rare to medium, this is not a lot of pink, but um, let me tell you, again, this is a select grade, so I am not having high expectations here. So I'd like to see um, how it tastes, and I'll give you my honest opinion about it. Okay, I get it. You can tell that it is dry aged, that's for sure. But in the end, this is a select grade ribeye. So the flavor that you're gonna get with uh, a prime rib is not gonna be present in here. But I wanted to see if by dry aging the select grade ribeye, if we could actually level it up as far as flavor goes, as far as tenderness goes. Now, there is juice, that's for sure, but it's not as juicy as your choice or prime grade. Uh, the question comes down to, is it really worth to dry age uh, select grade ribeye? In my opinion, if you're going to be using dry aging bags, I would say don't even waste your money on that $12 Umaye dry aging bag. But if you happen to get your hands on a, a select grade uh, ribeye and you have uh, room in your dry aging cabinet and you just want to throw it in there, of course, you can still go ahead and um, sort of level this up. But uh, regardless, I think uh, for a select grade, it's still a uh, good beef. Would I dry age uh, select grade here and there? I would definitely not be looking for it. But like I said, if I just happen to have my hands on a uh, select grade ribeye and I'm, I'm just grabbing it off the shelf, yeah, I would put it in the fridge. But if you're going to be spending uh, your $12 Umayi bag to dry age the uh, ribeye, I would say just skip that. Uh, well, you guys, I hope uh, this video was informative uh, for you. If you liked the video, please uh, press the uh, like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please uh, subscribe to my channel. They'll mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching this video and have a great day. Bye. You know what? The other end where the cap is, um, <laughs> it happens to be a lot juicier than this end. So I think um, I can update my review on that. Um, I. I'm definitely enjoying this other end. This part is a little on the drier side. It's still juicy, but drier compared to here. Here, you know, we have a pack of juice here. I mean, my mouth is really just watering. I want to take another bite.